Joining us now is Justin Feltman and Razi Jeffrey. They are both directors and producers of the documentary film Hamtramck USA that first uh, aired earlier this year on PBS about the first ma majority Muslim city in the United States. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us today. Thanks for having us. Appreciate having you on. So. Um, this documentary follows a local election, which to, to most people, our local elections are something that's not really a, a big focus for them, let alone a compelling story. And yet, the two of you decided in this documentary, Hamtramck USA, to put a big focus on the local election there in Hamtramck. What was the inspiration in deciding that that local election would be such a great basis to tell a story about Hamtramck? Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, we felt that uh, Hamtramck uh, being such a unique place, uh, America's first Muslim majority city, uh, in a climate of Islamophobia and anti-immigration sentiment, um, was an important uh, story to, to tell, uh, and an important place to set a story about national conversations about multiculturalism and immigration about. Um, just to add a little context, uh, Justin and I started working on the film uh, towards the end of 2016, early 2017, which was on the back end of the tw historic 2016 presidential election. And so that was definitely part of our motivation in wanting to uh, tell the story about Hamtramck. So, so what made the city of Hamtramck? Of, of course, it, it was settled by uh, German farmers. It quickly became a home for uh, people of Polish descent, Middle Eastern descent, uh, Indian, Bangladeshian, and, uh, and Pakistani descent as well. What made that city such a such a, a destination point uh, for immigrants that ultimately built it into the city it is today? Well, there's there's a lot of historic um, reasons why Hamtramck uh, became the way that it did. Um, you know, the main thing is jobs. Uh, the automotive industry brought a lot of you know different kinds of people from different backgrounds to Metro Detroit in general. Um, and then uh, different ethnic groups started forming communities in places like Hamtramck. Uh, and so for most of its history, Hamtramck was known to be uh, a Polish uh, enclave. Mm -hmm. um, and so in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, when a lot of the Polish community started uh, migrating outside of Hamtramck due to the loss of those jobs and due to other opportunities, uh, upward social and economic mobility for the Polish community as well, uh, that left a bit of a vacuum in places like Hamtramck and other parts of Metro Detroit. So that created a new opportunity for newer immigrants from places like Bangladesh and Yemen uh, to come in. Uh, we also saw that there were people moving into Hamtramck, not just from overseas, but they were moving to Hamtramck from places like uh, Queens and New York and Jackson Heights and Astoria um, to start a business or for marriage or other types of relationships. Um, so we saw this kind of interesting migration taking place. Uh, Hamtramck has also been a place where lots of refugees have been resettled as well over the years. Uh, the One of the more recent examples of it was in the mid-90s during the breakup of the former Yugoslavia when thousands of Bosnian refugees were resettled in Hamtramck. We're joined by both uh, Justin Feltman and Razi Jaffrey, both directors and producers of the documentary Hamtramck USA, joining us on the Megacast. And so uh, with such a diverse population there in Hamtramck, politically speaking, and, and this documentary follows uh, follows the story of a local election, as you said, uh, back uh, just before the historic election of 2016. Uh, it's following a local election with such a diverse community. Often there are a lot of different people that are going uh, to try to be the voice of the city or voices of the city politically, and it, at times that can, in some, in some more diverse areas, create factions of people or, or, or divisions, even in a very diverse and united community that you see in some, in some place like Hamtramck. How was that addressed, or, or, or what lens did you look at uh, that specific story within a story there in Hamtramck in your documentary? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, for, for us, we one of the main things we wanted to do when we first kind of talked about planning out the film is is kind of give the voice back to to Hamtramck and let, let them kind of lead the story. So, you know, we talk about these different enclaves and different political factions. We kind of let them build organically and let them, the, the subjects themselves, kind of guide us to them. Uh, and, you know, in a city as diverse as Hamtramck, uh, you know, 
the, the largest community may only be a third of the community. And so you really have to, although there's different enclaves, you really do have to, to, to go visit and, and you know, advocate for every group. Uh, so, you know, if you're going to su be successful in Hamtramck, you cannot just rely on one uh, ethnic community or one uh, religious community even. Uh, you really do have to get out of your bubble and, you know, really knock doors. I mean, throughout the film, we really show is the big thing that everyone has to do. And basically what it comes down to is knocking doors, you know, get out the vote efforts, is going to everyone's home. And you may not know which home is which, you know. Uh, so I think like a big thing in Hamtramck really isn't so much how you can kind of uh, find your own, uh, you know, subsection of the city, but really reach every section of the city. And so uh, for any filmmaker in, in documentary or, or anybody just in general, it's trying to learn about a community or, or to teach about a community, which inherently requires you to learn about it. Uh, you go in with, with different preconceived notions that you have to uh, be aware of, ideally, so that they don't become a part of your storytelling, but also that you're able to disprove or modify or, or uh, find out more about as you're in the process of making the films. For both of you, what preconceived notions did you maybe come into uh, producing Hamtramck US, USA with, and what did you learn that maybe changed those points of views or, or modified the reason for having them? Let's start with you, uh, yeah. Justin. Okay, yeah, so, um, you know, we really try to do a lot of research in the beginning, and I mean, you know, so you'd watch a lot of news footage, and when you watch news footage of the city, there's this clash of the civilizations. There's this, you know, us first them. Is the the new Muslim community are they going to be welcoming of of the you know Christian communities? And then you get there, and none of that stuff exists really. Uh, at least you know, the, sure that like any town, there's going to be political disagreements. There's going to be you know um, some 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 factions that may not always get along people may not get along but a lot of it's over the stuff that would happen in any city it's it's you know one of the biggest political battles we saw in the city hall was over trash contracts you know these are not things that have to do with uh you know religion <laughs> like that you see in the news and so i think that you know although everyone has their own ways of coming to the table this is not something that is what divides the city in any uh, I guess, meaningful sense, usually. And Rossi, you as well. Yeah, uh, you know, just to add to what Justin was saying, a lot of the um, coverage in the in the media, and, and particularly news media, about places like Hamtramck and, and also places like Dearborn as well, um, you know, has been kind of sensationalized. And this uh, sensationalized perspective is presented of what life in a place like Hamtramck is like. So for us, when we were working on the film, we wanted to let the city speak for itself. And any preconceived notions that um, anybody has, or that even Justin and I might have had. We hope that those preconceived notions might be deconstructed a bit through the lens of the experience of watching the film. And of course, we would encourage you know your audience to watch the film and, and form their own opinions about a place like Hamtramck. We're joined by uh, Justin Feltman and Rossi Joffrey. They are the producers and directors of Hamtramck USA, a documentary that was released uh, on PBS in March of 2020. You can learn more information by visiting HamtramckDocumentary.com, uh, where you can also learn about uh, how you can watch the film as well. So let's continue on with, with the discussion about the media perception of a, of a city like Hamtramck. Often in diverse communities, uh, where you know, especially in times of election where there's inherent divides because it's a competition in some in some to some degree uh, and a battle for power uh, those divisions are often going to be what's put under the microscope by the by the media and you mentioned that uh, multiple times especially uh, in, in the last question when you were uh, speaking about this issue that you really wanted to give the people of Hamtramck the, the, the ability to provide their perspective and they describe uh, what the diversity of their city means to them so in terms of uh, in terms of Hamtramck residents what what, what did they perceive uh, as being, how do they look at the diversity of their city? Is it more of in a positive light, or is it more of a div uh, of a, a divisiveness like has been portrayed by news media in particular? 
Yeah, I mean, I think when you take any um, sort of major shift in demographics, you're going to have a spectrum of views and opinions about it. Uh, so you have all the way from people that are not are unhappy about it, and it's going to be a major uh, impetus for them to leave a place like Hamtramck. And then there, on the other end, you're going to have people that are celebrating this type of diversity and really enjoying it. Uh, for the most part, we find people that are either accepting of the diversity or are really celebrating it. Um, we didn't really come across too many people in the course of working on the project that were angry or that were disappointed about how Hamtramck has changed over the last 20, 30 years. Um, and I think that's one of the things that Justin and I love to highlight in the film is that, you know, not only are we talking about this election that's taking place, but you get a wonderful snapshot, a beautiful mosaic of what a beautiful multicultural city is like. Uh, we spent a lot of time at festivals, uh, both Polish festivals and Muslim holidays and Labor Day events and Memorial Day festivals and things like that. We spent time in churches and mosques and all kinds of uh, cultural organizations and groups as they celebrate their holidays or their cultural events. Um, and so for the most part, there's a type of um, multicultural uh, ethos that's sort of marked and celebrated. And it's one of the things that I think Camtramicans take a lot of pride in is that they have a very, very diverse city. And this is represented uh, in lots of different ways. So if you were to drive north or south on Joseph Campau, you would see the flags of the many nations from whom the residents of uh, Hemtramck are comprised of. Uh, within the high school, they also have something similar in the main hallway when you enter Hemtramck High School. You see all these different flags. And all of this type of ephemera and these types of um, artifacts and monuments to diversity and multiculturalism are there to celebrate multiculturalism and diversity. We're joined by Razi Jaffrey and Justin Feltman. They are both directors and producers of the documentary Hamtramck USA. Learn more at HamtramckDocumentary.com. You can learn more information there and, and find out where you can watch the film as well. Again, that is HamtramckDocumentary.com. And so it's been, uh, by the time the film was released, it had been four years since that previous election that, uh, that you had covered in the documentary. Since then, uh, what changes have been made uh, demographically, politically, and so on in the city of Hamtramck that were maybe trending uh, that direction from what you saw when you were collecting these stories, or maybe even differently from that? Yeah, I mean, you know, since it had been a while, and, you know, COVID delayed the release of the film by about a year. Um, and so, it's interesting because this year it has played out that another election season happened. Uh, so several of the characters we follow ran again, including the mayor who did not win this time. Uh, you know, they now have, uh, or they will uh, starting next year, a Yemeni American mayor uh, for the first time. And so, you know, these are things that, that the shifts that happen over time and, you know, also uh, Fadl didn't run for reelection. Uh, so, so, you know, I think, uh, when you look also at the field that ran in this election, it's an entirely new one. You know, people are answering the call at different times and communities uh, who may have voted once, like anywhere in the country or in the world, you may have voted one way once and then the next election you vote a different way, uh, just kind of riding the ties and riding the kind of feelings of the moment. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not a community that's ever set in stone. Uh, you know, it is right now, it is the first Muslim majority city in America. Uh, but in many ways, that just is kind of another way of saying it's always been an immigrant city. And so, you know, each demographic changes, even within the idea of being a first Muslim majority city, that, you know, the Bangladeshi community may have been um, more populated than the, the Yemeni community. And that, you know, people are saying is now shifted as well. Uh, so these things are always shifting in the city and always, uh, you know, it's always kind of interesting to watch now that we're done filming from afar and how these things kind of play out. We're joined by Justin Feltman and Rosie Jeffrey. They are both directors and producers of the documentary Hamtramck USA. You can view the documentary or, or learn where you can view it and learn more information by visiting their website at HamtramckDocumentary.com. So, uh, uh, Rosie, let's start with you. Uh, this, of course, documentary released uh, in 2020. Uh, what's on the horizon for you next in, in uh, your film projects or other work that you're doing? 
Yeah, um, Justin and I are working on a couple of projects. Um, I'm also in graduate school right now, and I'm working on a film uh, about a small group of Yemeni refugees that uh, arrived in South Korea. Um, and uh, while I was working on this project over the summer as part of my thesis at the University of Michigan, uh, I came across a serendipitous connection to Michigan. Uh, one of the refugees that I met, uh, it turned out that his father uh, lives in Dearborn and is an American citizen. And now the story has become about this family uh, trying to reunite in Michigan uh, that's separated over four countries. Uh, and uh, I'm also uh, working on completing uh, a film that follows three Muslim chaplains in the U.S. military as they navigate religious freedom and Islamophobia. And that film is slated to be completed um, next year. Um, yeah. And Justin, how about you? Yeah, well, I, I did want to say we're actually getting a uh, encore presentation of on PBS's America Reframe, PBS Worlds, uh, on December seventh, and it will also be released digitally on January twenty fifth through Grasshopper Films. Um, that's also on the website, uh, as you said, HamtramckDocumentary.com. As Razi said, we we are working on a project uh, together that kind of traces Islamophobia in the the post nine eleven world. Um, and then I'm also trying to work on, unfortunately, not, not returning to Michigan. I'm working on one closer to me uh, back here in Virginia and another project in West Virginia. So hopefully I uh, will be back in Michigan soon enough. But uh, until then, it's been really awesome uh, being a part of the Michigan community. Well, uh, Justin Rossi, thank you very much for joining us, telling us more about your documentary and other projects that you have going forward. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you.